We are here at the Historic Society in Hamilton with Anne Marie Cohen and Jeanette, I mean Annette James. So tell us when this town was established. We were separated from um, Ipswich in 1793. Originally we were part of Ipswich and they, um, well Winthrop settled them, um, John Winthrop. He landed um, in 1630, and we were a part of Ipswich until um, 1793 when we became separated, and we got our own church. We were up until then we were called the Hamlet. Oh, the Hamlet. And the Hamlet is the word means that you're um, a village without a church. That's what it means. It was too far for people from Hamilton to go to it to go all the way to Ipswich to church. And they had to go to church because you, you, if you weren't in good standing in the congregation, well, it was at the time, in the churches, you couldn't vote. It was one of the things you couldn't do, you know. What did people do? Was it farming originally? What did, why did they come to Hamilton? Well, it was outlying from Ipswich, as I said, because that was the, the town, you know. And they were mostly farmers. That was all that people did. There were a few businesses um, that established themselves in the late 1700s, 1800s, but they were shoemaking. That was a, a good little business, surprisingly lucrative. And um, other than that, I think, I think that I read just recently that Hamilton had 21 shops. Oh. Um, in the early 1800s, so that meant they were they were dressmakers or wig people or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. I know they had blacksmiths and all kinds of things that were important to um, agricultural society at the time. And then there were a lot of large estates. That's what I thought. Yeah, yes. a yes. lot of large estates. Growing up, we used to say. Um, you either own the estate or you worked for the people on the estate. That's what a lot of people did. <laughs> and is that true still? Uh, not as much. A lot of the estates have been broken up mm -hmm. um, st to smaller lots, but still like, smaller lots could be four or five acres. Oh, um, okay. They, um, we were looking at one house trying to trace the history and they originally had over 300 acres. And, um, you know, it just gets broken down and, um, you know, the need for more housing. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Um, my family came from people who worked like that. When my grandmother came from Ireland, she worked um, as a maid on an estate. My grandfather worked as a horseman on an est a different estate. And um, that's, the way the, that's the way the town was at that time. How did the name come? Hamilton. I remember that Dr. Cutler was a big, great admirer of Hamilton. And since we were called the Hamlet, it wasn't much difference to say Hamilton, <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> I've been here over 50 some odd years, but I am not a native, no. Oh. But Annette was a town librarian for many, many years, so she knows but this I town as well. I not a native. <laughs> <laughs> she just said Dr. Cutler was very fond of Alexander Hamilton. We probably need to tell you a little bit about him. He was the second minister of the Congregational Church and a big mover for the separation away from Ipswich. Oh, okay. He also led a group, didn't lead a group, he organized a group to go out to the Northwest Territory to um, send all sorts of uh, covered wagons out to settle the area and um, had a lot to do with the negotiation of the Northwest Territory being slave free. And, um, and he lived here, he was the minister at the congregation, second minister at the Congregational Church and is buried in our town cemetery. Oh. Um, he was in Congress, he was a botanist, he was a mathematician, he was a teacher, he did a Not lot of things. very smart. <laughs> I learned a word when I was reading about him. They said he was a polymath. Oh, okay. So he was very he educated in a lot of different subjects. Sounds like Our way. town, one of our elementary schools is named after him. Oh, okay. Tell us about General Patton. We're sitting right here in his home. Um, this homestead at the uh, estate is called Green Meadows. Uh, he moved here. Uh, didn't spend a lot of time here because he was away in the service for so many years. But his wife and children were here. Um, children have all moved away, and his wife Joanne just moved just a couple of years ago. Her health wasn't good and had, had to start going to assist the living and recently passed away. But um, she, we knew her better. 
Um, she was a philanthropist. She was, it, she just did everything. She um, started a group called Special Friends for adults with special needs. Wow. And it was a social group and they had dances at the community house and all sorts of things. And um, oh, she just put, she put her effort into everything, a lot with military families. Of course, um, that would make she sense. Was, she was actually my hero. Really? Yeah, wow. absolutely. She wow. was so, so very, very gracious and kind and generous. Well, we moved quickly from the general to his wife, didn't we? We did. <laughs> He, he, was, he was a very rough kind of a man, but a very kind, apparently when you knew him, he was very kind and... Because that's how I've always had him present him, as very tough and rough. Yeah, so yeah the, the, the glove slap and the that, soldier. That's right, that's right. Yeah. It, when we can look out back, there's a World War II cannon out back. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's out there that he had brought back. I'd like to know who that person is over there. She was an author. And um, her, she went under the name Gail Hamilton. She was really a Dodge, right? Abigail Dodge. Dodge. Yeah, she wrote a lot of the, the Victorian novels, but she was a good writer, you know, in the manner that people wrote in those days, too many words and so on and so forth. But, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she, really, people did write too many words because they were paid by the word oftentimes. When okay. They were, you know. She was also a strong believer in women's rights. Oh, yes. Yeah. And she was kind of famous for um, her feistiness. She would be would listen to the sermon on in Sundays, and then she would, you know, raise her hand. <laughs> well, she had things to say, <laughs> and um, not what the minister said. <laughs> yes, she would. I and she was intelligent and cultured and um, learned enough to be able to um, argue with the minister or at least discuss things vehemently. David um, Morse lives in Ham lived in Hamilton. Okay. Yes. David Morse, who was on St. Elsewhere and has been in lots of TV shows, um, yes. and graduated from the high school. He's probably our most famous um, actor, actress. There's been several. What drives the economy in Hamilton now? We don't have businesses. So, so do people go to Boston to work or what? Yes. They go to Boston. We have to train. Yeah, we train. You, wouldn't you say Anne Maria? Yeah. Well, not yeah. necessarily Boston, but all around, you know. All around. A, what's a what's this polo club <laughs> I hear about? And horses. Are there a lot still? Not, not as many as there used to be in the and I think it was in the seventies we actually were the home for the United States equestrian team. And one of the reasons they chose to see was the open space and the number of people involved with the horses. And at that point, there were more horses per capita in <laughs> Hamilton than anywhere else around. That's funny. Um, it was kind of funny. Um, Myopia Hunt Club was founded in, I've got it written down, 1787, I think, by four brothers who had bad eyesight. Um, they had myopia, so that they called sense. it the Myopia Club in Winchester. So and they decided they needed more room for golf and for polo. So they came, they were looking for property and came here and bought the property in Hamilton. Um, they have a world-renowned golf club. It's one of the top hundred in the world. And um, polo starts soon and it is just so much fun. Um, in the 70s and probably the 80s, they attracted um, British royalty. We had Princess Anne and her husband at the time and um, there were several others who came. There was Mac Phillips, there was, yeah. um, there were different presidents, golf there. Mickey Dolance played, Mickey Dolance from the Monkees. I wish everybody could see a polo game because it's so exciting, it's incredible. I've never seen a polo on and game. And they have it every, just about every summer, every Sunday. afternoon in the yeah. summer. And, yeah. Sunday and, afternoon. and is the public allowed in? Oh, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. there's, there's admission. Yes, but yeah. charged yeah, by the car. Admitting. Yeah, but the, what it is is you're not up on a very high or anything. You're usually standing around the edges of the polo field, and sometimes the horses are really intent on getting the ball, and that they'll they'll run and you you, you, you like get out of the way just in time because really it's so intense. 
you can see the people are, it's hard work and it's an it's intense game. And people bring meals, so it could be a picnic basket on the grass, or it could be a candelabra with champagne oh, and, and wow, all everything. You know, wow. it's, it's, yeah. it's fun to see all the it's different sad. things it that is. come. It yes. really is fun. Wow. Remember when they were making movies here, they had... The Thomas Crown Affair. The Thomas Crown oh, They did wow. that. Thomas Crown Affair was, was uh, filmed here. Um, President Ford's son went to Gordon Conwell Seminary. Yes, so we've had, yes. you know, a lot of famous people yes, in and out. Have. This property um, was given to the town as a gift from the Patton family. Um, at a town meeting, Joanne got up and spoke and um, donated the house and all the land. Um, the town accepted it and then wasn't sure what they were going to do with it. But um, they've sold some land off to Greenbelt. Um, which is nice so that it'll always be left open. And they rent they rent the space out to farmers, to young people oh, okay. that couldn't afford to buy it. Mm -hmm. So which is just terrific because we certainly need that. They did sell off a little bit of property to some the several homes that were built on what was the original property. This goes out back to the Ipswich River. So you can go out there and boat. And um, it was just a wonderful thing. And they really haven't really figured what they want to do with this property. Right now it's the uh, temporary town hall as the town hall is um, being renovated. So there's plenty of space here, so we can take a walk through before we go. What do you find special about your town? I've lived here all my life, actually. Okay, <laughs> all right, well then you know Actually, all about it. my grandchildren are fifth generation in this town. Really? My dad was actually born in a house in Hamilton, which doesn't happen often. No. Um, it's just a quiet, peaceful place to live. It's a great place to grow up. Um, We've got the parks, we've got lots of sports, church activities, uh, top-notch schools, teachers who really care, um, police department that's very committed to the community, um, lots of open space, not as much as they used to be, but still lots of open space, and um, close proximity to Boston. We have the train that takes us right in, and um, it's just really a good place to live. People are very, very nice. Thank you very much.